It's a high bypass fan from what I was looking at. Yep. Now, now, did I miss it? When? Just now. When will then be now? Soon. Speaking of old military jets, is there a reason why the Air Force can't consolidate the quad dual engine mounts on the B-52 down to single engines? Um... Username, it really has to do with, I mean, how much do you want to modify B-52? How much do you want, how much do you really want to screw with it? That and a B-52 would look, a B-52 would look strange with four engines. It would look strange. It, it was engineered for eight. The, you can't tell me that there's no off-the-shelf application that would fit in there nowadays where you could still do eight smaller engines instead of four bigger ones. Right? If you have an off-the-shelf motor that basically makes the plane way better and it just fits in the same spot, just use that. Right? But, see, the thing is, is that the, the B-52 just looks... All right, all right, Here, here's the biggest reason. L look, at, look, at, look at that. That, no. I don't... I don't, you know what, it doesn't look bad, but, but it's not, that, dude, oh, yeah, yeah, baby, that's, that, that is, that's nice, I mean, that doesn't, it doesn't look, you know what, that doesn't look as weird as I thought it would, I was picturing it in my head looking just really stupid looking, but that, you know, that doesn't, hell no, hell no, D no, 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 <laughs> that, kill it, Oh, please just, all right, let me see, it doesn't look bad, it, it really doesn't, it doesn't look bad, uh, that doesn't look as bad as I thought, but also, it's not that, that looks aesthetic as frick, oh gosh, it even has, yeah, no, kill it, kill it, kill it with five, kill it, yeah, see, that looks nice, yeah, get that, I mean, dude, think about how many control systems you'd have to do to put four engines on it. It's not just, okay, let's attach four engines. Your fuel plumbing is going to be completely different. Are you just going to cap off stuff? Are you just going to cap off the fuel lines? Because there's got to be four fuel lines on each wing, right? You just going to, or is it one that splits? In which case, now you need different pressure. You, do, you Now you need a different feed pressure. We're just getting into the wings, dudes. What do you do to the flight deck? You gotta take out the throttle quadrant and then you need to redesign that now. And that means if you're redesigning the throttle quadrant, you gotta go screwing with the avionics. Do we wanna do that? I don't wanna do that. Do you wanna do that? Hell no, screw that. That's, that takes way too much time. Find, find something that fits in these, fits in these nacelles that's off the shelf nowadays. Keep the double lines for redundancy? That's. So keep the double lines to waste money, Tessa. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, we should do that, to waste money. It, you'd fit right in at the Department of Defense. Prepare to fast forward. Preparing to fast forward. Fast forwarding, sir. Fast forwarding. Sounds right to me, Aqualux. You sent me something.
What is this money? Discovery, go and throttle up. Hey, Adam, there's my guy. 60 months, what's going on? We ain't found nothing! Pixar, it didn't happen, Mutter. Tomorrow is update 8 for Satisfactory. Well, I know what we're playing tomorrow. Now, t man. Foggy and Overcast and Lompoc. I watched now, last night's launch out of my back window. It was cool. Right on. I had to stand up and turn on the computer, bro. I can't renew Prime from the iPad. Still love you, man. Thanks, Adam. Right on, dude. We're still not done with our Stellaris games, you know. Maybe we'll play that on Wednesday. But guys, I would like to remind everybody while, while you're here, I'm only streaming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week. And then I'm probably going to be gone. I'm probably going to be gone till the 26th. So 14 through the 26th, I'm out. I got stuff to do. Like, like stuff to do. Did my resub show up? I Nine, don't know. Launch auto sequence seven, has started. Six, five, four, three, two. Oh, you like the new badge, Adam? Yeah, that's 60 months, man. Thanks, Vinny. Right on, man. That's all I need, Tessa. You're getting a finger tattoo. What? Confirmed. Dragon separation confirmed. Follow, just almost double that. All right, here we go. Transporter eight. Who's ready for a rocket launch today? And Falcon Nine has landed. Maybe we could do that, Fox. Sure. Welcome to the webcast for the Transporter Eight mission. SpaceX's two-stage Falcon Nine rocket is currently scheduled to lift off in just under eight minutes from now from Space Launch Complex Four East at Vandenberg yeah, Space Force Base, course, yeah. just a few hours north of our headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Hello, everyone, Yo, and thank up, you for Jesse? tuning in. I'm Jesse Anderson, a manager for Falcon Production here at SpaceX, and I'll be your host as we follow Falcon 9 takes 72 spacecraft to low Earth orbit and beyond. As you might have guessed, today's launch marks our eighth dedicated small sat rideshare program launch. And if you've been following along, this mission marks our second launch for today, 40th launch in 2023, and 239th yes, mission of on. all time. On board the second stage are 72 spacecraft, up, including yeah, CubeSats, microsats, a re-entry capsule, and orbital transfer vehicles carrying spacecraft to be deployed at a later time. All 72 spacecraft will separate from the second stage between 39 deployment events, which is scheduled to start around the T plus one hour mark. Although all 72 payloads will deploy within one deployment sequence, has started. views okay. and telemetry will vary, out, vary throughout. In the middle of the deployment sequence, we will have a short blackout period, but as always, we'll bring you live coverage as it becomes available to us. And we are currently working towards a T0 of 2.35 so, p.m. Pacific time, which is just there. about six and a half minutes from now. It's Weather is south, green Georgia. and the range so, is ready to support. Right. But if for some reason we don't south. launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. There was a Starlink Hello, everyone. Morning. I'm Krista Rhodes, a structures engineer here at SpaceX, and I'm joining Jesse today to cover the Transporter 8 mission. The rocket supporting our mission today is kind of like two rockets in one, RTLS, the first Adam. stage and the second stage. The first stage will ignite one, all, RP1 load all nine complete. engines at T minus zero, and then lift off from the launch pad and take the vehicle to the thicker parts of the Earth's off. atmosphere. When the two stages separate nice from each other, the second stage will light its single engine to propel the payloads to where they need to go for deployment. At the very top of the rocket, we have the payload fairing that protects our 72 spacecraft until the vehicle is outside the Earth's atmosphere, at which point the two fairing halves separate to expose them to the vacuum of space. And right below the fairing, we have our second stage, which houses our single Merlin vacuum engine, or MVAC engine, which will propel our payloads to their eventual destinations in space. And as a note, on today's mission is our tallest rideshare stack to date sure. and will deliver the largest mass to orbit. 
You might be able to see this after fairing separation, so keep your eyes peeled. And after se fairing separation, you'll notice a shorter nozzle attached to our Merlin back oh, engine. Oh no! Back engine. Not the stubby and nozzle. And we don't need as much performance for the mission at hand today. Not the stubby nozzle. Below the second stage is the black carbon no. fiber inner stage. And the inner stage connects the two stages and houses the center pusher that allows the first and second stages to separate during flight. And it also houses the MVAC engine that I mentioned moments Thanks ago. Thanks for pressing for strong back retract. And below that, that we have the first nozzle, stage, which Chad, we usually no. refer to as the booster. And the first stage makes up the bottom two thirds of the vehicle and this has nine M1D engines at the bottom. And those nine Merlin engines do the bulk of the work to get the rocket no. off the ground yeah, and up to the thinner left, parts really of Earth's atmosphere. To to monitor, it's also the primary part of Falcon 9 track. that we recover, refurbish, and reuse for multiple flights, which brings down the cost of regularly launching rockets. And at about two and a half minutes into flight, the first stage will separate and make its way back to Earth and attempt a land landing at landing zone four, as you can see on your screen, not too far away from the launch pad. And for those of you keeping track, today's mission marks this booster's ninth not flight, having previously stubby. supported NROL 87, no. 85, SARA, no, 1, SWAT, and four Starlink missions. We need proportion. And if successful, okay. this landing will also mark SpaceX's 200th landing of an orbital class rocket. SpaceX first successfully landed a booster, booster back on land in December of 2015 and successfully landed on a drone ship just a few months later in April 2016. Flight proven first stages have launched about 90% of the last 100 plus missions since the start of 2022. Yeah, they have 150. Recovery rubber. and reuse are incredibly important for our teams to build the most advanced rocket fleet, fly rapidly and reliably, and propel us towards our goal of full and rapid reusability with Starship. Yeah, JP, absolutely, man. It's really cool. Our goal with these missions is to provide small satellite operators competitive pricing, increased flight opportunities, and flexibility. We're flying some really cool payloads on this mission, including several different types of Earth observation and imaging, orbital transfer vehicles, oh, yeah. student research projects. Guys, I gotta, I'm going to run some ads here real quick. Um, thank you, Mutter. I'm going to run some ads real quick so people don't get ads during the launch because Twitch is in insistent that you must you must see ads but you don't want to see it during the launch so i'm gonna run them now if we don't have a choice choose to run them now rather than not during the launch so we'll see you on the other side chat and if uh you're subbed or something um hey this is weird great ride to space for these 72 payloads on board today just a few minutes from now yeah vulcan name there. It's over there somewhere. Will those ads even get you a dollar? I don't know. No, you're weird. Uh, I think you're weird. Destroyed. Rextroid. They get me about 350. Yeah, about 350. Uh, At T minus two minutes, we are currently waiting for the completion of locks loading on our second stage. We should see a gas closeout on the transporter erector here. There's a rig out there. And the there, white clouds yeah. that you can see circling Falcon 9 are completely normal They're and the result the of our there, super dude. chilled liquid oxygen coming into contact with the relatively warm ambient air at our launch site in launch Vandenberg. To the south. Stage two lock load is complete. And as you just heard, stage two lock loading okay. has wrapped up and we are now waiting up. for Falcon 9 to go into startup in around T minus one minute. And at that point, the Falcon 9 computers will take over our launch countdown. This is Vandenberg, Mark, yep. So what they're doing is they're, they're getting the uh, oxidizer out of the transporter erector. What's the reason? Well, you want your rocket fuel here, not here when you go to launch. So the lines that they were using to fill the second stage, they evac of all propellants. You don't need this catching on fire. This is going to do, this is going to catch. Falcon 9 is in startup. This is going to catch and on fire enough for everything. And we just heard the call that Falcon 9 is now in startup, meaning that both stages are now beginning to pressurize for launch and the flight computers have taken over. We're now waiting for a final go for launch from our launch director. Well, there's the fog right there for, for Vandenberg. LD is go for launch. Launch director reports At T minus 40 seconds, all systems are a go for launch of Falcon 9 with all 72 payloads on Transporter 8. 72 payloads on this thing. The payload dispenser looks like a Christmas tree. T minus 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Here we go. 
Just nice view. Dread. Thank you for the gifted sub. 20. 15 seconds. Ten. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Sound suppressor five, is on. Four. Three. Two. Green one. flash. Engines full power. Good ignition. And lift off of transporter. There she goes. Go transporter. Down rocket. Good. Our second one. We had to today. Into the clouds. Good report of <clears throat> nominal propulsion from the first stage. Next call off the loops here will be for the power and telemetry, indicating that Falcon 9 is on the optimum path for flight. Should be happening in the next 10 seconds. We yeah. are T plus 35 seconds into flight. Falcon 9 has cleared the Roll tower program. at Space Launch Complex 4 East. We are currently throttling down the engines in Power preparation. And nominal. Bingo! There in it is. In preparation oh, for shot. Max Q. Hello. And great view you can oh. see there on the screen of the vehicle. Vapor cone. Vapor Max cone. Q oh. Is the point of oh. Max That's Q is sick. the point of Did maximum you see that thing? aerodynamic stress that the vehicle will see in the Max Q. And great That's timing. Nice. We have just passed through Max Q. <laughs> That's nice. Now we do have five oh, events oh coming up in quick succession. <laughs> That will be Miko, stage that was separation, awesome, man. stage one flip, SES one, and then the start of the boost back burn on the first stage. And Miko is main engine cutoff. That's where we shut down all nine of those engines that engine chill has started. So they're starting to move. Where we shut down all nine of those engines that you can see burning there on your screen. That will help slow the vehicle down in preparation for the next event, which is stage separation. That is where the first stage will separate from the second stage. First stage will make its way back to Earth with stage one flip and the boost back burn, while the second stage will have SES one or second stage engine start one. And that's where we will ignite the end back engine on the second stage the as it propels right our payload to their targeted drop off nominal. orbit. Again, those five events are coming up here in just about 15 seconds or right so. There. That is Miko, stage separation, Stage one flip and boost back California. burn, as well as SES one. Los Angeles is that way. If you're trying to get your bearings, you can kind of almost see the bay too. Man, that booster's been used. We're looking up cut off. the business end of the second no, stage here. Stage separation confirmed. Okay, got a good set. <laughs> the stage ignition. The first stage is turning around to go back to the launch site. And back ignition. See the RCS on the first stage? It's turning it around to get it to point back towards the landing site. Landing site is actually right where it took off from. This is a shot up the second stage. That nozzle will retract. First stage is really turned around, cool engine ignition. views there. We just had Miko stage separation. You could see the first stage doing its flip Whoa. maneuver. And okay. the okay. boost back burn has begun on your right hand nozzle. screen. You can see this that short MVAC back nozzle ignited. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're done. Hey, what's up, man? Very, very oh. cool views. Now we're coming up on fairing separation. This is the fairing, fairing separation the payloads. confirmed. Separation looks good. Mm -hmm. And there you can see the deployment of our fairing halves. These are all they are the now making their way back on. down to Earth. Stubby nozzle is better than full nozzle. You just got through telling me that the Beluga is better than the Dreamlifter. And Your we are coming up count. on the boost okay. back burn here in a few seconds. Boost Ugh. back burn <laughs> conclusion. Shut down. And there we heard that call out for boost no, back burn shut down. You can see on your left hand screen nozzle. as those engines shut off. Stage one trajectory nominal. That wasn't me for once. Great I'm call outs there. Shit. Now the next major milestone coming up is the entry burn on our first stage, which is scheduled to occur Why? around um, the T plus six minute mark. Save some cash, Ilya. They don't need the performance of the big nozzle, so they use a stubby, stubby nozzle. We're currently in our first of two M back burns. This burn should last for about another four minutes or so. And as Jesse California, mentioned, the next milestone will be the first stage's entry burn coming up in about two minutes. See Catal for those Catalina of you who are Island unfamiliar, Falcon 9 performs two burns. You can see Catalina Island down there, home of the famous Catalina wine mixer. The biggest helicopter sales uh, emporium on the West Coast. To slow down Falcon 9, which adds extra stresses on the rocket. A single Merlin 
When the engine relights for entry burn and following entry burn, the booster will go through its final burn, the landing burn, which should slow Stage two trajectory nominal. Which should slow the vehicle down even more for a successful land landing. It's a freaking Catalina wind. As you can see on the left side of your screen, we have two out of Falcon's four hypersonic grid fins in view. And they measure four feet by five feet and help us guide the booster to the landing site by actively changing the vehicle's center of pressure. Does that smaller nozzle, nozzle aid in performance? No. So <clears throat> you're going to take a huge specific impulse hit from that, Ludfam. You're also probably uh, noticing yeah, some white puffs they, of gas. They do from it because the they don't stage. need the performance. They'll take the efficiency hit to save some cash. System, which also helps us I control mean, the vehicle. I mean, if you think about what that nozzle is designed to do, right, it has to, it, it basically doesn't. It has to be able to get rid of the heat in vacuum. It's made out of a lot of exotic materials. SpaceX does it to save some cash because that's made out of, yeah, some strange stuff, dude. The next major milestone we are waiting on is the beginning of our stage one entry burn, nope. which is about 30 seconds away. Give me one second. Both altitude and speed are as expected for both our first and second stage. Okay, first stage should be coming down here. It's tough to, sh to tell orientation. If I had to guess, California's right here. Stage so one the landing started. site is pretty much right where my and mouse is. As you heard, our is. entry burn has now began and will last okay, for another 20 go. seconds. Do they really save that much in the long run, though? It's the materials that they make it out of Blood Fam, from what I understand. It's the, the materials are really rare. That's that's it. They cost they, they cost a good chunk of change, dude. SpaceX is literally eating up the supply lines, from what I can tell. There we go. Supersonic retro propulsion right there. First stage coming back into the atmosphere uses the exhaust gases to push the re-entry heating away. That's also coincidentally why Falcon 9 gets covered in soot. Stage 1 entry burn. All right, we're through. Stage 1 FTS has saved. We've now completed a successful All right, entry watch the grid burn, fins. They'll start now that our shaking around as, you get, as the atmospheric pressure gets higher. The first stage has one more burn left in preparation for landing. Oh, and as I mentioned earlier, the landing site's in the clouds, guys. It's right here. For the ninth time today, oh, targeting a land dude, look at going through the clouds. Before. That's the plume. That's the plume from the Another launch. Key ah! the oh, Falcon 9 that's awesome. <laughs> that's the freaking plume from when it went up. And Dude, that's so the good. <laughs> the the and yeah, that's awesome. It went through. The, it went through its own exhaust. Land, landing burn to begin. Just Here we go. Seconds. Stage one landing burn. All right. This is gonna come up real fast. The clouds are really low. There it is. Oh, oh what a shot! Landing legs deployed. Landing leg deployed. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 dude, that never and gets old. That's so good, man. Oh, it's so good. It's so cool. So it flew through its own exhaust plume. That's so good, man. Marking the ninth landing for this specific booster. It also marks the 200. Oh, come on, that's so legit. 200 landing of an orbital class rocket. <laughs> okay. Next step here is uh, second stage engine cutoff here. That was the ninth landing for that booster. And you know what? That's not even the highest reused the one. They have boosters that are up at 15 flights, guys, seconds. which is crazy. And back shut down. Whew. The green is normal, and Creeper. It's the igniter fluid. Well, guys, the reason... <clears throat> With successful cutoff of oh, our orbit. Good orbit insertion. Guys, the reason why one leg deploys a little bit slower than the other one, that shows how steep the trajectory is when it's coming in. The reason why that happens is because if the booster's flying not perfectly if it's coming in perfectly over the launch site like this, all the all the fins will or all the landing legs will deploy kind of symmetrically. If it's coming down and still kind of tilted a little bit, well, the aerodynamic pressure on the inside is going to be a little bit different than on the outside, right? It's the aero, and the leg actually has to overcome a little bit more to get all the way down because the booster's kind of crooked to the ground. So gravity and aerodynamics actually make them not deploy kind of symmetrically when Falcon 9 is coming in from a steep uh, landing. When, and keep in mind, when I say steep, I mean in rocketry, like steep is more this way. 
like, you know, steep in real life is like straight up as opposed to shallow, right? If the rocket's coming in steep, it's coming in this way. This is not steep at all, right? Yeah, so if it's coming in from a crazy trajectory that required a lot of high performance from the first stage, the landing legs won't deploy symmetrically. But if it's coming down onto the drone ship, they usually deploy relatively symmetrical. But if you, we can go back and look at that footage right there of the landing, you could see that it's tilted hard when it came in. It's arrow and it's just where gravity is. That, that, that landing leg has more moment to overcome. See, see how crooked it is? Now watch, the arrow is kind of holding that thing in. Crazy, right? Crazy. You could definitely see it kind of slow down because we're coming in tilted. It has, there's, the booster is creating some lift there. <laughs> All right, anyway, I'll keep us up live, guys. I'll be right back one second, okay? I'll get us up to live. We'll, get to the satellite deployments here in a moment.
Okay. <clears throat> I'm back. <clears throat> oh, dude, you got the tunage. So that re-entry capsule is testing on Ormit pharmaceuticals by manufacturing on a craft built by Rocket Lab. Plenty of synthesis that has much better yields. If not, it's only possible in zero G. <clears throat> you know, Michael Lex, we can say whatever we want about Big Pharma, but Big Pharma putting money towards space flight is... I'm okay with this. You okay with this? I'm okay with this. They should... Let's hope that yield is more potent than on the ground. Launcher, a vast company is ready when they deploy. Let's go. There you go. Space Pharma, big Space Pharma. I'll, I'll, dude, I'm in. You son of a gun, I'm in. Big Space, baby. Oh, Ray, what's up, man? With the raid 102, what's good, bro? <laughs> Ray, what's up, man? You guys know, if you guys don't know Paul Scambates, he's a Scambate streamer going after scammers on live on stream. I always say he's doing God's work. You're doing God's work, Ray. You're doing God's work. We also rescue vis victims. Oh, can you serve French fries too? Here, let me get let me get you a shout out. <laughs> if I mean, I'll shout you out if the answer is yes. Oh, the answer is yes. That's what I'm talking about. Space weed. Hey, B. Yeah, yeah. See, B ones. See it? Yeah. You're telling me that, you dude. We get the cannabis industry launching stuff into space. That's there's a lot of money in that industry, from what I hear. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> also, per the patch they put out, they are now known as Launcher a Vast Company. Now, does that mean they're a vast like a big company, or is Vast a, a Lidos company? You know what I mean by that. Introducing our Orbiter SN3 missing patch. Launcher, a vast, vast company. Tactical, 24 months. Thanks, man. Can, guys, do you mind? Like, we're a little ways out to deploy. Do you guys mind if I just kind of go back and watch this again here? Another key aspect of just, just need to watch this again, Falcon if you don't mind. stage is equipped with four landing legs made of carbon fiber with aluminum oh. honeycomb. And they're placed symmetrically oh, around the base. Nick, thanks for the streams. Hey, around the no base problem, the man. And deploy just prior to landing. Thanks for the 27 months, dude. I appreciate it. Hey, Smithy! There he is. 24 months. Thanks, buddy. Look at this, dude. Oh, that's cool. Watch. So the arrow, uh, the arrow lags that, and then you slow down and up, and ba-ching! So I'm not trying to be like, oh, it worked in Kerbal. That phenomenon. The reason why I know about asymmetric leg deployment is straight up from building landing legs in Kerbal. I'm not even kidding. You could you can say that's weird. You'd probably be right, but that's why I know that's why I know that that happens when the booster's coming in kind of tilted. One has to overcome more arrow than the other one because the the low it's lower pressure on top of the booster than it is underneath the booster because arrow because because of the way it is. Cool, huh? T plus 645, she says something like F, flight termination no system is safe. What's that? So that is the flight termination system on the second stage, Adam. Basically, they, they shut the flight termination system off when the second stage reaches a speed where if something did go wrong, it would just burn up. Yep, so shut it off. The Dutch space program will get you high as a kite. I don't think we're talking about the same thing, though, BM. You know what I'm saying? Gordivand. Bedankt. Bedankt. You know, you know what I'm talking about? I don't think we're talking about the same thing. I don't think we're talking about the same kind of space program, though, man. 
Robolai SpaceX runs with a, sh a, a stubby nozzle, and I hate it. It looks like the Rhino engine from KSP. It looks, it, I, they run a stubby nozzle because of the, because uh, they save some costs when they don't need the performance that the big nozzle offers. So, all right, we can get into that real quick. Um, the larger nozzle basically, so up in space, all right, when you're up in the vacuum, Discovery, there's nothing that keeps the air, the, the gases coming out of the nozzle going in one direction because there's no, there's no pressure. There's no air pressure to kind of keep them in a column. So the gas really likes to expand. The exhaust coming out of the rocket nozzle expands. It expands like crazy. So because there's no pressure around. C contrast that to like when Falcon 9 goes to launch, right? When Falcon 9 goes to launch, the rocket exhaust is in a nice, neat column because there's air pressure. But as Falcon 9 goes higher and higher, see, the, the gases expand. See, we'll just back it up just a little bit. See what I'm talking about? As it goes up, the pressure goes down, so the gases expand. Now, so that means when you're up in space, the bigger nozzle you can have for your engine, I mean, this... It's a little bit more complicated than that. It has to do with flow separation. It has to do with exhaust velocity. It has to do with mass flow rate. If we really want to get into technical, I can do that. But the short story is, is that if you have a bigger nozzle, you can vector more of the explosion in one direction before it just radiates out in all different directions, right? So you're going to be more efficient with a bigger nozzle up there, right? But the nozzle in this particular case, you don't need that big of a nozzle. SpaceX figured out that you don't need that big of a nozzle. The reason why is because they don't need the efficiency. Now, the interesting thing is that the engine's pretty much gonna make the same amount of thrust no matter what, right? You, you might get a little bit of an increase in thrust up there because there's no, there's no atmosphere, right? So it'll fly, it flies up in space a little bit better than it flies down here, but Honestly, your thrust might go up just a little bit, but your efficiency is really where you get hit. Your miles per gallon is the big deal. M miles per gallon, so to speak. That's called specific impulse. Okay. If you vector, if you have a bigger nozzle, you can basically accelerate the gases more in one direction. And the faster those gases come out of the rocket nozzle, the more efficient, the more efficient, more efficient it is, right? So that's, I mean, you, you determine specific impulse in seconds from burn time and exhaust velocity. Basically, literally, how fast is the gas coming out of it? So think like a balloon. You let go of a balloon, it shoots all the gas out. If the balloon shoots the gas out faster, it's going to go further, right? Pretty straightforward stuff. So SpaceX opted for this cut-down nozzle, and they take a huge efficiency hit where they don't need the performance. Falcon 9's design has been upgraded over the last 10 years so much where they can afford to literally cut the nozzle off and it still performs like a Falcon 9 from 10 years ago, which is pretty damn impressive if you don't mind me ask, if you don't mind me saying, not asking. I ain't asking nothing. Yeah, anyway. Um, it with that being said, Robolai, yeah, it looks horrible. I hate the stubby nozzle. I I hate it. I think it looks so strange. Hey man, is this what you do for a living? You seem to know your stuff. Veros, I teach on Twitch. I teach people about rockets here. I'm self-taught when it comes to the stuff, dude, but yeah, I like propulsion. I'm a propulsion nerd. Big propulsion nerd. Oh yeah. Now the question is, does stubby, stubby MVAC use less material than sea level Merlin? I'm not sure. I don't even know if they have the same nozzle, dude. Right on, Barrows. Yeah, nice. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, I mean, I read propulsion books for, for fun, dude. But yeah, I, I teach people, I do STEM outreach here, teach people about rockets, because rockets are awesome. They literally make fire and shoot it out of a tube. It's awesome. It's the most metal thing I've ever heard. The Choda nozzle. Shh, shh, we're not calling it that. Shh, we're not calling it that, man. <laughs> you know, space flight is a series of tubes. It's like a big truck. You test spacecraft for a living. Right on, Veros. Hell yeah, man. That's cool. What type of what type of testing, dude? You do like wall testing or what? That's awesome, man. Vacuum exposure and vibration shock. Oh, dude. So you're one of those guys in the in the ninja suit when the satellite's in the it looks like a recording studio. You have all the um, the foam 
the foam pointy things pointed at it. I don't know the actual name, but yeah, that's doing the acoustic test. That's cool, man. That's sick. It's a freaking sweet job. One of the, I mean, Kang, what I try to do is tell people how freaking complicated those damn satellites are. They're, they're, <laughs> they're more expensive than the rockets that they fly on, that's for sure. Thanks for the stream. All right, Antares. It's an anechoic chamber. Cool. Anything that burns food and move or moves fast. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's what I've narrowed it down to, Adam. If it goes fast, I like it. Forza. Forza. Caballino Rampante. Discovery, go and throttle up. Hey, you got gifted a sub. Right on, dude. Yep, yep. Yeah, Varus, I've been doing this for the better part of a decade, man. You know, you teach. the more and more you teach about it, the more you pick up. And, you know, eventually... Like actual rocket scientists come in and they say, "I'm like, I want to I want to know more. Where do I go?" And they're like, "Oh, get this book, this book, this book, and this book." And then I go and read it, and, and you get better at it, you know. I don't do antenna testing myself, but the largest anechoic chamber in my in my country is in my lab. That's cool, dude. That's really cool. That's cool, man. Yeah, Poison gifted you a sub. Poison, thank you very much, dude. Thank you. EJ reads, this is science itself. I mean, I don't keep I don't keep this book on my desk for no reason, man. Read this for fun, man. So when deploy? Uh, it's gonna be a second. You have the largest vacuum chamber in the country. Cool, man. That's cool. Very nice. It's built for the shuttle program back in the 70s. Right on, dude. Built for the shuttle program. Let me guess. I'm, I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna read your thoughts. Don't, don't say it. You, don't say it. You want me to make a donation for the Coast Guard Youth Auxiliary? No, that sounds like Italy to me. If I had to guess, Veros. Talus Salini is something like that. Hyped about Starfield. I actually haven't looked into it, Chupa. Chupa, I've been busy. I was busy over the weekend. I didn't get to see the Starfield trailer. Anyway, Ver Veros, I'm a shuttle nutcase. I love the space shuttle. I think it was the. I think it's one of the chadliest launch vehicles of all time. Shh. It's Canada, but don't tell anybody. Uh, oh yeah, bud. Oh yeah, you got a big vacuum chamber up there, eh? When are you gonna set up a PO box, Adam? I've had a PO box set up for like eight months, man. It's on the Discord. It's posted in the information on the Discord, dude. You certainly are a nutcase. Yeah, and yet you're still here. Hmm. Talk about Italy. The little little duce has passed over. I don't know what that means. So they tested Kendarm in the vacuum chamber. Apparently, with SpaceX's 200 booths are landing, time flies, huh? Vasya, we were like steadily gaining traction and then the pandemic happened and all of a sudden on the other end of the pandemic, it's like, oh, that's the 15th flight for the booster. I'm like, <laughs> when did this happen? Berlusconi, oh. Berlusconi passed away, interesting. Yeah, the chamber that tested cannon arm is in your lab as well. It's not there anymore. Cool, Barrows. Yeah, dude, I think I've I think I've driven past that before, dude. I, I'm I'm from a little ways a little ways south of where you're at. I I'm pretty sure I know where it is. Uh, I'm in I'm down in Boston, so I'm not that far away. Um, if it's the chamber that if if it's the chamber if it's the CSA chamber that I'm thinking of. So Vero's second question here, uh, on a scale from one to maple syrup, how pumped are you that Jeremy Hansen is on Artemis two? Are we past maple syrup, or are we, are we, a, we a poutine, or or beaver dam? Like, where 
Where are we? Where, where are we there? <laughs> Is this the chamber? It's pretty exciting to see another Kinect go, oh my guy. It's pretty awesome. Probably something like that. I just spent 10k for an ad. Is it playing already? No, but it is now. Did I hear beavers? Timberborn? No. no. But anyway, Barros, that's cool, man. Uh, that's that's awesome stuff, man. Uh, I always I always find it very humbling when people from the industry come in here and stuff. It's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, like I can get into details with you know with propulsion and stuff. Uh, but I try to I try to keep it simple. I don't want to sit here being like, oh, the exhaust velocity is causing an underexpanded flow when you have vacuum, and that's causing flow separation inside of the nozzle, which can create nozzle burn through in certain conditions. Like I don't know, try not to get too crazy into that, you know. But I do know, Andrew, you're at baseball. Discovery, going I'm going with it landed, dude. You guys, you got to see this landing. I'm gonna show it again. You've only been doing it a few years. Right on, dude. Right on. All right. You got to see this, dude. It flies through its own exhaust plume. Now, and I'm not talking about supersonic retro propulsion. Here. Like, here. Let, let, let me show you. So, this was out of Vandenberg. Vandenberg's launch pad and landing pad are right next to each other. Probably about four bowling, four bowling alleys away. Any any system but the metric system for me, okay? No, it's um, they're about 100 meters, maybe maybe 150 meters apart, somewhere in there. Um, so when it came back down, it actually went through the exhaust plume on the way up. It, it was actually really cool. Here, let me let me fast forward a little bit. So check this out. After supersonic retro propulsion, right? My favorite part, my favorite. They always efficient flamethrower. My favorite. So watch this. Or or the loading screen. So check this out. Right here, that's the exhaust plume from going up. Right there. Dude. Oh, it flies through its own exhaust plume. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> That's so legit, man. <laughs> it's like walking into your own fart cloud. Uh, mildly concerning that that's the first thing you thought of, Mark, but y yes, yes it is. It crop dusted itself, but everyone loves their own brand. Oh, everyone loves their own brand, mate. <laughs> Stubby nozzle is so ugly, yes. I'm with you on that one. Through the clouds and watch this next shot. Oh, hello, baby. That's good enough. Do, 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 do. Good enough. It's a bit nutty. <laughs> Currently, stage two is over Antarctica right now. If I'm remembering right, we tested some of the CubeSats that are on this flight built by students at Canadian universities. Oh, right on, man. There you go. Antarctica. What? Why is Stubby Nozzle? The performance wasn't required, gah. Yeah, performance not required. It's just low earth, or low earth orb. I was about to say low earth orbit insertion. Okay. <clears throat> low earth orbit insertion. You don't. You, they don't need the. They don't need the extra efficiency. That in Falcon 9's design has been so ridiculously stretched. Like, it's crazy to me that they can literally cut the nozzle off of the engine and be like, yeah, it'll work. But yeah, that's, dude, performance wasn't warranted, dude. Gil, 40 month resub. AJ missed the launch, looks like it went well. Yeah, Rem, that happens sometimes. Here, Gil, check this out. This is, this is the best part, this is what you gotta see right here. I just showed it. There's the supersonic retro propulsion. Best part. Best part. Oh yeah, it is a single engine. Interesting. Now watch this, dude. She's coming down in for a landing. The landing site's like right there, right where my mouse is. Watch, watch over here on the right. You start to see some parallax. The first stage has one more burn left. 
See right here? See those gray clouds? The, cl well, the gray-er clouds? That's the, that's the ascent plume. <laughs> Dude, the ascent plume. Oh, it flew right past it. <laughs> that's so cool. Bumps. Your Boston is showing. Bumblebee tuna. Bumblebee a tuna. Hi there. Nice to see you. Bumblebee tuna. Bumblebee tuna. So, Boston, I met a techie from the Lincoln Lab up your way at a conference last fall. She was doing some pretty cool stuff. There is some wicked nerds around here, dude. Oh, yeah. There's some, there's some wicked smart people. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. Should be coming up here to SES2, SECO2, and then deployment will start. That means altitude winds were absent. That's, yeah, Adam, right? Yeah, if that, if that thing is still up there, because it usually fizzles away if there's some upper level winds. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Good call. Yeah, she was way smarter than me. <laughs> Veros, sometimes when you, yeah, dude, sometimes I meet people from around here that are. Yeah, you know that, like, somebody's starting to talk and you're like, whoa, okay. I, I understand some of these words. Wow, this person is way smarter than me. All right. I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that happens a lot. That happens a lot for me around Boston or just in my travels as a spaceflight nerd. You, you meet people that are way smarter than you. It's like, huh? Oh, I was lost at the conference. <laughs> nice, man. <laughs> Wicked. Yeah, dude, I, I know. One time I I went to the ISS Research Development Conference. It was in Boston in like 2014. And man, was I lost. I was like, I don't know what's happening. These people are saying words and I don't understand them. I like space shuttles. That's cool too, right? The Smithsonian Air and Space Museum was fun, though. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's some pretty, there's a pretty good piece of kit up in there, man. All right, fellas, Brimo got me a sandwich. Brimo got me a sandwich. I'm gonna go put it in a microwave. I'm gonna heat it up real quick. I'll be right back. Two seconds. Well, more than two seconds. I gotta put it in for 30. But I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna eat this, and then we get to the deployments. No, 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 no. That a Jersey Mike's? Maybe. Maybe we found a Jersey Mike's. It's a little ways away, Cirrus, but we found one. Good plan. I'm gonna go nuke some food too. Alright, alright. Okay. We'll we'll meet back here in five minutes. Five minutes. Alright, cool. Are you sure about that five minutes? Are you sure about that five minutes? Wild, what's that? Does the stubby nozzle mean that more fuel is burned or is it more efficient? Um, it means, no, the same amount of fuel gets burned. It's just less of the explosion is literally using to, you're, you're using less of the explosion to push you in a certain direction, dude. That's really what it is. Think about like if you have like a garden hose and you put your thumb over the end of the hose, not a lot of water is going in the direction that your thumb is in because your thumb is in the way and the water goes out sideways. Same idea, but there's no thumb, there's just no pressure. That makes sense, dude? More directed thrust per unit, per fuel unit spent. Yep, there you go, Veros. Yeah, you got it, bro. All right, I'll be right back one second.
geez, it'd be really nice if I could get the mouse to move between monitors. That'd be really good. It just likes to get stuck on this one. Anyway, I'm back, dudes. Yep, gravity wins every time, Maros. Every time. What I tell people, dude, on here, like about space flight and aerospace engineering, is that, well, it's like playing Tetris. You never really win. You just kind of get better at it as you go. Yeah. And you'll get a higher and higher score. But you never win. I saw a video the other day with someone claiming we don't we don't need gravity and asking why Newton invented it in the first place. <laughs> what a yeah, Newton, what is he thinking? Him and Kepler, the lot of them. They suck. Why did they make these rules? <laughs> All right, Paul, we'll do, man. That's awesome, dude. Got to bring that Viking energy up into space. You know what I'm talking about? Damn you, Newton. Why'd you make all these rules? didn't invent gravity, yeah, we would be colonizing space by now. Navarro's, that leads me to another thing that I tell people. Stay in school. Stay in school. Newton's laws are so limiting, we need a... We need a patch. Someone say colonizing? Yeah, of course the Dutchman's like, huh? Huh? She didn't seem on. like she liked books. <laughs> Dude. I'm... <laughs> I'm using that. <laughs> can I... Can I use that? Yeah, I met a person the other day. They uh, really seemed like they didn't like books. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. I'm using that. <laughs> I reject Newton's laws and substitute my own. Yeah, right. I wasn't trying to be funny. No, I know. I know. I know, but I'm using that. <laughs> I missed the launch apart from the landing burn. Oh yeah, everything is good. Nominal trajectory. Everything is A-OK. -okay. All right, we should be getting up to deploy. The deployment sequence on this after after the second stage engine burn is gonna be cool. This thing's just gonna start shooting off satellites all in all different directions. This is usually where the Canuck dunks on the American education system. Average American education system, thank you. We have the institute, man. Synths, synths and stuff. Seriously though, part of the part of the part of the reason why I'm here is to you know try and curb that curb, curb that <laughs> trying to you know the ship the ship's going this way and it's going towards Niagara Falls right and I'm like trying to I'm be like hey, let's, let's not let's let's not do this let's, let's go over there mission relief ladder Gordo Gordo. <laughs> Who's mad at gas cars?
still playing Kerbal 2? Kerbal 2 needs more time in the oven, dude. But, uh, uh, Veros, I, I know the devs. I know the devs of the game. I have faith. I have faith that'll, you know, just give it some time. It just needs more time in the oven. I've been playing, I've been playing KSP 1 and I've been doing a little bit of variety streaming. But, we should get an update for KSP 2 next week on the 20th. Yep, yep. We haven't felt brave enough to try. Yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> average. Okay, average. <laughs> Sparrow, hey, it is what it is. The U.S. is a very, very big place. Very big place, sir. With a lot of different demographics. People come from all different walks of life, all capabilities and limitations. It's all due to their individual efforts. They proved that they can do the job. They proved it for the world to see. And I'm mighty proud to be associated with folks like that. Odds of getting science next week? Don't know. That was a John Young quote, for, in case anybody was wondering. All right, they're chilling down the motor here. They're basically priming it, getting it ready for another firing, and also thermally conditioning. Thermony, ther well, it's good. Rewind five seconds. Welcome they're thermally conditioning the second stage engine. SpaceX is using liquid oxygen for their oxidizer. It's really cold. You don't want to flash freeze the motor. That's bad for it. Yep, that is bad for it. Yep. Completed the first of two so what they're doing is they're flooding They're flooding the motor right now or flooding the pumps for the motor. Uh, and yeah, all that solid oxygen comes flying off. That's what that is. The stuff that people think are, thinks aliens. Yeah, it's just, it's just oxygen. It's just solidified because when you outgas into a vacuum, stuff solidifies, the, including humans. <laughs> Fun fact. Second stage engine cut off right there. And there you could see Don't ask me why I know that. I've seen Event Horizon, okay? I know what happens. Again, just a three second burn. That was SES 2. Nominal deploy orbit. And Seco 2, and we just heard That's possible, Aerodite. PJ is intimidatingly so tall. So that, it looks like we're on track for payload deployments to start in about No, you're, you're just comfortably vertically challenged, Vin. Or As something. a reminder, there will be a total of 39 deployment events for our total 72 payloads that are on board the second stage. If you're not familiar, don't let humans off gas in your space. It makes a mess. Yeah, they tried that during Apollo 10. It didn't work too well. <laughs> Emotional <laughs> damage. <laughs> no, it's okay, guys. You might be vertically challenged, but I'm horizontally challenged. No really you know. Ugh. Give me a 38 months. Of the 72 payloads on board the second stage today, we have CubeSats, Microsats, a re-entry capsule, and an orbital transfer vehicle. Floater moment. Transfer Literally, a floater. In the, like, the here. most literal sense of that term, Thomas. Yeah. All right. So what they did after the engine firing is that now they're flooding the engine with helium to get all that oxidizer out of there. You know why? Because if you have to fire the engine again, you don't want to leave oxidizer inside of the turbine machinery. Oxidizer oxidizes things. And the components are metal. It'll rust. You don't want it to rust. That's what I'm trying to tell you. If you were not aware, Mauritius and HBK. And if you were not aware, ground stations are how we get live camera views and telemetry. So only some of our deployments will be visible today. I was aware of that. Were you aware? Russell, did you realize that? No, I did not realize that. Yeah, the nozzle is tiny, Podwee. They use it. They're using a cut down nozzle to uh, save on the the materials for the for the rocket engine. They're trading some As efficiency reminder, for cost. There are a total of 72 spacecraft that will separate from the second stage between 39 deployment events. The first eight deployments will occur during a time where we won't have great access to ground stations. And Aerodyne, you get the reasons, but knowing the wasted efficiency of the engine hurts you. Well, think of it like this. Think of it like this. The smaller nozzle means less components that are wasted on non-reusable components of the rocket. Picking up what I'm laying down. Picking up what I'm laying down. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. As always, if we're able to regain signal earlier than planned, we'll provide live views and updates as it becomes available. 
the shorter the nozzle takes less time to make. Should be yeah, starting of course, here in a few and it's seconds. less expensive. But that means they're using less components on the non-reusable parts of the rocket. That's less stuff that burns up in the atmosphere. Fossil set Ferox separation confirmed. Okay. Five head SpaceX, indeed. Eh, kind of. Right now they're over AII Delta separation confirmed. They're over Ethiopia here. The, the ground stations aren't going to get us a decent signal here. JSAT separation confirmed. Iris 1 separation confirmed. We'll get a reacquisition of signal once it gets out over the Mediterranean. The, the next ground station that's in line with the track that we're on right now. IV, separation confirmed. For the rocket is Svalbard, if I'm looking at that right. Iris 2, separation confirmed. Do you remember the great Italian conquest of Africa? I see. The Italian League. They broke the spaghetti. We cannot allow this. Lemur 2, Embryonus, separation confirmed. Are they... Are there SpaceX ground stations in Africa? Yes, SpaceX, not not U.S. Not, Miser A, separation confirmed. Not not U.S. The, the SpaceX has one in Gabon, and they have one. In great news, we have technically not Africa, but Diego Garcia, so far, Maldives. As I previously mentioned, we were not able to have like, live views for Gabon those deployments. Gabon is the big one. That's over there. But we should there, be regaining ground station coverage here shortly, and should have some live views of the you next. You don't want to screw with the antennas, Aquilex. Screwing with the antennas is like changing the motor. And it's a lot of paperwork. <laughs> After deployment, do they perform a deorbit burn for the second stage? Most likely, yes. Meridius, that's the other one, Deadbringer. Yeah, I knew I was forgetting one, dude. I was like, what's the other ones? Should it not be dark if if we... Shouldn't it not be dark if we can see the, the sun? Acquisition of signal, Dubai. Oh, they have a ground station in Dubai. I didn't know that. Well, now I know. Oh, no, no, we don't. Never mind. <laughs> Lemur 2, Nazia, separation confirmed. Oh, yep, here we go. All right. Vandenberg, Lundprod. Lemur 2, Adam, Alahi, separation confirmed. Have you seen the Kepler network stuff that's being built? Who's who's building Kepler, Veros? How do shadows work, magnets? I'm not saying changing antennas. I'm saying it, an auxiliary system that's not part of the main system. Swarm space fees 168 through 179. Separation confirmed. That was a lot of satellites. So they ejected a dispenser there. That's why they said uh, there was a range of satellites. It's a, it's it's only Droid spacecraft one. that deploys a bunch of other spacecrafts. So these right here are payload attachment fittings right here, PAFs for short. And SpaceX has a common attachment bus right here that all X the satellites can attach to. Separation oh, there we go. Hey, look, so long, little guy. That came out of a dispenser. Some of the that was a little cube sat. That was like a, I think it was like a one U cube sat. It was a tiny one. Miser B separation confirmed. And they're deploying it out of a dispenser. If you're deploying small sats out of a dispenser, your dispenser has the payload a static payload attachment uh, fitting right here. Tiger These are all PAFs. Separation here. confirmed. Now notice that SpaceX makes one type of PAF and they just stack it on top of each other. See one, two, three, and then they have a top one up there. The, a forward-facing PAF for any type of specialized payload New that needs to be up 40. on the front. Separation confirmed. Kepler Communications is building satellites for optical internet connectivity in space. I've heard of it, Veros. I don't recall it off the top of my head, dude. I, I disseminate a lot of 41. space news information Separation on here. confirmed. Bye-bye. Into the darkness of space. So how many U's? Uh, we, we, three we use. I don't know. I don't know. I forget how CubeSats are measured.
Oh, that's... Mahoodles, there's going to be a CubeSat James Webb sidekick in a few years. That's cool. CubeSats are measured in U's. I, I knew that, Will. I don't know what the measuring system, like, what denotes a 1U. I knew that that one is small, so it's like a 1U CubeSat, I think. I think it could, could be wrong on that one. Kepler launched a bunch of sats on Transporter, like 3U sats, I think. That's, do the name sounds familiar, Thomas. Very familiar. Oh, wonderful. The addition of items for us to track innovate has just become this much harder. <laughs> They're all in the same orbit, AOD, for what it's worth. They're all 97 degrees, 97 degree flight azimuth out of, out of Slick 4 in a sun synchronous. Expected loss of signal, Melindy. There's LOS from the Melindy ground station. They should get an AOS, excuse me, they should get an AOS through Svalbard. That should be happening. NewSat 43, separation confirmed. Oh, there it goes. Just saw it off the corner of the screen here. Yeah, these are all different satellites here. NewSat 42, separation confirmed. You see some of the solar panels attached on there. They're, they're not unfurled yet because you don't want to deploy when you're still attached. At least it's SunSync and not LEO. Indeed. Those launch corridors are getting a little bit tight, huh? It's called Mantis, and it will be looking at ultraviolet light. That's that's actually wicked, Moo. Having something, a CubeSat that's accompanying... Bye-bye. Having a CubeSat that's accompanying James Webb out at Earth-Sun L2 is pretty hardcore, considering they're orbiting around a neutral point in gravitational pull, which is... That's what blows my mind about James Webb. The sun shield's awesome. The telescope is amazing. But when I tell you that that telescope is literally orbiting around a neutral point in gravity where the sun's gravitational pull and the earth's gravitational pull cancel out there's like a tide pool of gravitational pull and james webb orbits around the tide pool it is wild stuff man those those neutral points between gravitational pull of celestial bodies are called lagrangian points hey and i seen thanks man 73 months scale of cubes that's for you thank you sir Ah, I know they're a long way from Svalbard, Deadbrig. I'm saying that the next ground station they should get a signal through is Svalbard, I think. That Dubai one will keep them in a good hand, good till they hand over to Svalbard, I think. I wish KSP had Lagrangian points. Yeah, don't we all? Right? I'm so stoked. I'll assume it'll be at the Lagrangian point with James Webb. Yeah, they'll probably be toilet bowling around each other, dude. <laughs> Which is still wild. The fact that we can make orbits out of, like, that orbit around neutral points. ABA point, first runner separation confirmed. That orbit around neutral points in gravitational pull is wild to me. Uh, uh, orbital mechanics is cool. <laughs> orbital mechanics is really cool. How stuff flies through space is like space surfing. No you're surfing. You're not surfing a wave of water. You're surfing waves of gravity. <laughs> we don't. They don't actually surf gravitational waves. I know that's not how that works. Please. I know that gravi gravitational waves are different. But also. If there's any physicists out there, surfing gravitational waves would be the most metal thing in the world, and you can't deny that. We should do that. We should do that. Screw light speed. We don't need light speed. Surf a gravity wave, man. Last 57 months. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, too hard. Orbit that? Sounds good to me. Tomorrow, R2, separation confirmed. I'll see you tomorrow. Sorry. Yeah, make the black hole spin around themselves and ride the wave. That's that's what an Alcubierre drive does, fellas. Orbital mechanics is super cool. Like, I know nothing about that stuff, but I'm all about astrobiology still. Hell yeah, Moo. All right. Discovery, go at throttle up. Gregoire, separation confirmed. That was the Guar satellite. Did you hear it? We're launching the Guar satellite. 
Hey, where they go? Cool to see some of those deployments Dang, late, live in space. Uh, uh, that confirms 23 okay, of 39 deployments so far. As I mentioned previously, we will be heading into a blackout period until we reach our next ground station around the T plus one hour and 14 minute mark. If we're able to gain coverage earlier than that, then we'll be sure to bring you live views. The signal, Dubai. They have an LOS through Dubai. We'll be sure to bring there. you live views as it becomes available. Next, so stay tuned and we'll see you again soon. The next tracking station is right there. Er, no, right there. It's there's a there's a island out here. It's part of Norway. It's called Svalbard. I think that might be Iceland. I can't really tell. It's hard to say. Yeah, but there's no there's no ground tracking stations in this area, particularly like right in here. They don't have ground tracking stations. <laughs> Something like that, AOD. AOD, did you hear that uh, SpaceX got the uh, the lease on Slick Six for Falcon Heavy and like crew launches? I think I heard that right. Yeah, you heard that. Cool. Svalbard is Spitsbergen. I don't know what that means. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is in Pennsylvania. I'm honestly surprised SpaceX doesn't have a Starlink uplink on this. Changing the antennas on spacecraft is a big deal. They don't change it because uh, Aqualex asked this question a little bit earlier. Guys, uh, they don't. you don't want to change it. You have to go through a ton of FCC paperwork to do that to get something to fly with the right antennas. Changing the antennas on anything that flies is not something... That's like as much paperwork as changing an engine, guys. That's a lot of time and a lot of regulatory stuff that needs to get done. That's why they don't do it. If I had to guess... They're probably designing Starlink into Starship's capability out of the box. Well, in fact, I know that because we saw Starlink antennas glued to the side of, S of SN24 when it, when it exploded. Technically not wrong. Spitsbergen is the main island in, Sval in Svalbard. Got it. The island is called Spitsbergen. Don't spit on me. That's right, AOD. Mm -hmm. Antenna are expensive to test as well. There you go. When's the next burner deployed? They, they had an AOS through Goonhilly. They had the uh, Southwest England, Goonhilly, in, in Cornwall. So they got that one before Svalbard, but this is a very, that's very low on the horizon to, to Southwest England. Is the truck done? Any wrenching tonight? Truck's good, man. In fact, Webberl, I gotta go. I gotta go take it on a shakedown cruise again. I gotta keep driving it to make sure that nothing's wrong. So when I go to drive it to the wedding, the wheel doesn't fall off. It's true. Second ISI satellite separation confirmed. Yeah, they're deploying stuff right now, dudes. Well, I was in a mad thrash basically over the entire weekend. I had Le Mans on and it was just, I was just fixing everything I possibly could, dude. Can Cornwall launch polar ish and retrograde ish horizontally? No. Polar. Po I mean, maybe a retro orbit, Erudite. But yeah, no. It, no, I have a seven day grace period weather guy. I'll just. I'll just wait till after the wedding. Oh. Alright, AOD, I assume he was talking about retrograde orbits or polar orbits, I think. <sighs> Deploying the ice ice sats before passing over Finland is heresy. Terve. Terve. Eva Pave. Welcome back to the webcast of SpaceX's eighth dedicated small sat rideshare program mission. We had successful liftoff at 2.35 p.m. Pacific time from Space Launch Complex 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. So far, we've Bad had luckily. a total of 24 no, confirmed separation events out of our 39 total. And we did have three deployment events during the blackout period, which we will hear confirmed over the next shortly. Oh, there goes another one. Third ISI satellite separation confirmed.
Note that there there is a slight rotation on the second stage. See the shadows changing, guys? The thing is spinning. It's a good trick, from what I've been told. You guys getting seasick yet? Separation confirmed. Adios. El satellite de caliente. I'm so proud that Cornwall is part of the is a big part of the space community. Every astronaut on the ISS should have a, a pasty. <laughs> Discovery, go at throttle up. Oh yeah, that's that's nice. That's nice. You well. What's going on up there? Any advice for peeling off exhaust gaskets? Uh, a razor blade. Acquisition signals, uh, Svalbard. Heat it up. Oh, there's the AOS through Svalbard. Heat it up, dude. He heat it up and then hit it with a razor blade. What a shot. Oh, that's killer, man. I would really like to see this someday. Oh! Fourth ISI satellite separation confirmed. Sci 4. Adios. Oh man, that's killer. It's so freaking cool, dude. Lightly hit it with a Rolock disc if you can get to it easily. Listen to 619. Starcraft 3 separation Discovery. confirmed. Starcraft? Identify target! Rosie, move it! Absolutely! Yeah, there you go, Jonathan, right? That satellite's like, not now, my people need me! Flying over Tromso right now, Norway. Yep, there you are. I'm yeah, I'm having trouble making out the coast. I think that's coast the coast. Three separation confirmed. I can't really see it. Not to fifty, huh? Hi, Pythos. Hi, Thos. How fast once they are jettisoned are they moving? Uh, they're they're jettisoning them sideways eight bits, so they're going the same speed pretty much as the spaceship, as the main the the, the second stage. They just have a slight differential velocity sideways, so they'll kind of stay in formation, so to speak. But you can see those dots over there are other satellites that they have deployed. <clears throat> so they're, they'll kind of be near each other, but deploying these, it really depends on which direction they deploy the satellites. If they deploy it kind of up relative to the terrain, it'll be in a different orbit, a slightly higher orbit, because they jettisoned it up. So the stage will... The satellite will actually slow down and the stage will actually speed up because it's higher, it's further away from the grav well, so its potential energy will go up if you jettison upwards. You jettison below, the satellite will go out in front of you. Oh. DARPA's Blackjack Aces 2, separation confirmed. Blackjack Aces 2 from DARPA. Hmm. Weather's not good up in Norway, so you're hidden. Yep, yep. Yeah, 8 bit. So. The, the orbital speed is not changing by much, but it does depend on which direction you deploy in. There's six directions, right? You have forward, back, up, down, left, and right. It really depends. So if you're going to deploy it this way and you're going that way, your differential speed is going to be a little bit less. <clears throat> but if you notice that second stage is turning around, it's changing direction. They're probably turning it, or the, the computers are probably turning it to put it in the right position to deploy these satellites up and down. Not left and right. Runner one, Fossat, Delta, separation confirmed. Laters. Thoughts on M uh, Microsoft Light Simulator 2024. Expected loss of signal, Goonhilly. LOS through Goonhilly. Yeah, it'll be pretty cool at the sign, yeah. 
Oh, I saw the trailers. They look good. Yeah, see, there's a special type of special type of separator over there. We couldn't see it before. Ion SCV zero eleven. Savvy Simon. Separation confirmed. Simon says separate. That satellite was dropped and they had to rebuild it? No way. DARPA satellites damage at processing facility ahead of SpaceX loads. Whoops, okay. DARPA's blackjack, ACES 4, separation confirmed. ACES 4, ACES high. You gotta keep them separated. Gotta keep them separated. <clears throat> now it's stuck in your head. You're welcome. Obvious off topic, EJ. Thoughts on Ford's move for charging and others following? Oh, 619. I think that's great. I think that's great, dude. Frankly, having different chargers was stupid. Standardize it just like just like a just like gasoline pump. It's brilliant. And Tesla's way ahead of everybody else. Ford said, frick this. We're not going to waste time doing that. I'll just use theirs. <laughs> nice, Panther. Nice. Later. DARPA's Blackjack, Aces 1. Separation confirmed. Okay, so Aces 3 should be the next one. It seems to be opposite. So they'll flip the camera and there'll be another one up here. See these? These are all payload dispensers. Those are those are RPAFs. They're radial payload dispensers. So they're deploying. So the stage is facing that way. They deploy 90 degrees off. Still got some CubeSats up there attached to the front, but those could be dispensers too. I'm not really sure. I didn't see a consistent. We didn't see consistent footage of the whole thing. So. Thing is, there's been a charge of standard Tesla was notable and not. Yeah, because Elon probably looked at whatever the standard was and said, "Wow, that's dumb. I can make this better." <clears throat> it was stupid to think that most owners would be okay with sitting at a dealership to charge. You know what? I'll be honest with you. That's not Ford's worst idea. Varda's Winnebago one separation confirmed. Space Winnebagos. <laughs> Always when I'm eating. This stage will be disposed of, Vivi. Yep. Good. Stubby nozzles should be erased from the record of history. Lone Star. Raspberry. There's only one man that would dare give me the raspberry. First rocket lab photon on another rocket. It's hilarious that it's on SpaceX's rocket. Yeah, 619, I think that's that's the stupidest part. Yeah. I've lost the bleeps, the sweeps, and the creeps. You don't need that private. We are right here. Now what's it? <clears throat> it's not all he's lost. I thought for sun synchronous it would go to a graveyard orbit. No. What's up? What's up, man? It's one of my favorite movies, slow. <laughs> Five forty five is sun synchronous booger. Yeah, it's not that high of an orbit. Whole planet's covered in clouds? That's not clouds, that's snow spectrum. We're up over the North Pole. That's ice, actually. <laughs> see all this? That's ice. See the see the poofy bits? The poofy bits are the clouds. The the, the jagged bits are ice. DARPA's blackjack aces three. Separation confirmed. Bye bye three. See you in hell. Wait, what? And with that confirmation, See? we've successfully deployed all payloads on today's mission.
Clap. If you're interested, a full listing of today's payloads can oh, be found Spectrum. over Don't at SpaceX.com. We would like to thank all of our rideshare customers for their support on today's mission, and of course, our viewers for your continued support. As I mentioned earlier, Transporter Clap. 8 marks SpaceX's 40th mission of the year. That's 40 launches in just six months, and it marks our 200th landing of an orbital class rocket. It's taken a lot of hard work and dedication from our teams to get to this milestone today. And to give you an idea of what of 200 it, launches Booger. and landings look like, we'll leave you with an animation showcasing our past and current launch manifest. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again soon. What is this? <laughs> this is gonna start going really, really quickly here in a second. Watch. Yeah, Thomas, you know. I mean, dumps it. It's not affecting you, dude. Watch this, though, dude. Trust me. Trust me. Watch this. This is cool. Remember all the marathon streams that we had to get all these rocket launches? Oh, dear. Gee, why are there no launches in late 2015? I like this. This is worth it. Watch, watch. This is going to start getting nuts. <laughs> the Falcon Heavy, yeah! <laughs> Yeah, watch. Ready? We do. We got the beeps back. Dude, look at that. Oh, that's so baller. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, dude, that, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand. Falcon Heavy landed two boosters. Yeah, there was there was a Falcon Heavy launch and, and two boosters landed and then I then I blew up the center core. Yeah. That escalated quickly. I mean that really got out of hand. I didn't see the Starship launch in there, Ark. I don't at least I don't think. Yep. We We gotta check. We gotta check. We gotta check. Nope. It's just Falcons. A wild dust appeared in the end cards. Yeah, you saw that? That's awesome. It's freaking rad, man. Found your next project. A 54 Ferrari Mondial. I know. Uh, you know, Hellfish, you know, um, 
You know how they say, like, no low ballers. I know what I have. No low ballers. Actually, th that actually applies here. No low. That's a 54 Ferrari 500 Mondial. Yeah, that's... That is a super freaking rare car. It has seen better days, though. It, it's seen better days, but early 50s Ferraris are extremely rare. Like, extremely rare. That's not a car anymore. Eh, there's, there's still got a little bit of car left. There's still a little bit left. There's a headlight. It's, it's Oh, come on. Come on, Chad. She's not so bad, man. Oh, the, the blue book on her is, you know... 200, you know, so you take 80 from 200 and we make a deal. You subtract 80 from 200 and we make a deal. So this, this thing with my brother's over. 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 Done. Nobody insult me. Nobody puts a gun in me head. Kill him. Shred the car. <laughs> show me the car. Show me the car. Show me the car facts. How do you even rebuild that? You know what the thing is, dude? The same way that Ferrari built it. Ferraris were handmade for the longest time, dudes. Handmade. So that's what the that's what the car looked like. Handmade. On a, on a these, this was hand rolled on an English wheel. That's how you'd go. And, that's how you go and fix this. You'd have to hand roll it again. You'd really need somebody that's super specialized. It looks like this thing got into a crash though, <laughs> or something. crazy that you know what you know what the messed up part is guys you could put two to three hundred grand into that restoration two to three hundred grand and you know what the messed up part is you'd probably make money 50 any ferrari from the 50s any one of them is worth easily over a million dollars easily because you know why because they're race cars it's not like today where you can buy a Ferrari and it's a street car that has race car pedigree, okay? In the late 40s and early 50s, Enzo Ferrari, the only reason why he started selling Ferraris was to fund racing. He wanted to race, okay? That's why he wanted to race. He didn't give a frick about the car market. So what he did to make money for his race team is literally build people race cars and then sell them to them and then piss off I got my money, now I want to go race. So, th these early Ferrari cars would be, th th it's literally the equivalent of you being able to buy like a Formula One car, or that Ferrari that just won Le Mans, Forza, and drive it on the street. That's the equivalent. Pretty crazy, actually. That's why those cars are worth tons of cash. A 54 500 Mondial, that's, <clears throat> mm, yeah, that's expensive. It's worth a lot of money. Keep clicking through the photos. The engine is there. The gearbox is there. It's the diff that's a little bent. Let me see. Is that the actual... Are those pictures of the actual car? Dude. Oh, that's so legit. You forgot the part of Enzo personally approving who could and couldn't buy it. I love it, God. <laughs> it's the most Italian thing. that You cannot buy the car. You are a simpleton. You do not get to buy Yeah, see? It's a tube chassis. Freaking tube chassis. They just, just weld a bunch of pipes together and then... Look, it's all hand-rolled, man. Ooh. She's a little rough. Damn, dude. What the hell happened to this thing? Spoon, 38 months. So you chuff, they finally won the Le Mans after 58 years, something like that, man, something. I prefer they won something else that they keep competing in instead of something that they haven't competed in in a long time. Oh, Colombo. Oh, yeah, okay. Junk, bro, yeah, whatever. Billy, you're saying words, but I'm, I'm not listening. <laughs> You're saying words, but I'm I'm not I'm not uh, nice. Mm. 
It's a V6. It's not a Kalemba. Yeah. Are you sure about that? Wait a minute, what? Shut up, Tessa, I gotta read. The rise of Ferrari's inline four-cylinder sports races during the mid-1950s is one of the Mark's least heralded chapters, but it's the most fascinating. During Formula 2 competition in 1950, Enzo was startled to notice that the four-cylinder cars from other Marks were nipping at the heels of his V12-powered steeds. He soon realized that four-cylinder engines peaked at a lower RPM band than the 12-cylinders, enabling them to maximize their potentially noticeably faster than re higher revving V12 Ferrari. Yep, yep, yep. It's a four-banger, Tessa. Hmm. Wow, look at that thing. That is freaking ancient, dude. But look, dual overhead cams. Dual overhead cams in the 50s. Okay. Wow, look at that thing. Look at the freaking... <laughs> I know, for my endeavors, that that you joined is in fact broken. It's missing some needle bearings. Wow, that's cool. Dude, look at the drum brakes. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Yo, what the frick? Yo, that's a death trap. Wow, dude, look. Look at the linked suspension in the 50s, man. This, this is some cutting edge stuff. Wow, that's actually really cool. Yeah. By the way, how are you liking Stellaris? Stellaris is a good time. Finned drums. Yeah, the drums. The outside of the drum is a heat sink, Norath. That's right. Isn't that cool? I like Stellaris. Stellaris is a good time. Yeah, yeah. Really good stuff. Anyway. I bet in that condition it goes for over 500 Gs. Oh, absolutely. No low ballers. I know what I have. Seriously. You could probably put about two, 300 grand into that resto. Like, bring the thing into a space flight clean room. Clean everything, put it back together, re-roll the steel, probably spend two to three hundred G's. You'd still make money. Oh yeah, absolutely. Cars worth a lot of cash. Artemis 4 stuff, what do we got? Mint versions can go for four plus million. Yeah, you could, that means you could put a million dollars into the 